A big welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this morning's session. We are locking ourselves down with biology. We're going to go through the other session of eukaryotic cells. We want to find out exactly how the plasma membrane looks like. In our previous session, if you recall, we did discuss a few things about the structure, talking about the interior, etc. Now, there are a number of things that we ought to be abreast with when it comes to the eukaryotic cell. And this session looks essentially at the plasma membrane and what we are referring to as the endomembrane systems. Two important things to add to the plasma membrane. What precisely is our objective in this particular encounter? I am particularly interested in you being able to describe the structure and function of the plasma membrane. The structure and function of the plasma membrane and then what we refer to as a Golgi apparatus as well as the lysosomes. So these three would be a central objective for today. Now if you recall we have said that we have two types of cells what we call the eukaryotic and the prokaryotic cell. So in defining prokaryotic cells we, we look at the absence of a membrane bound nucleus and then for that of the eukaryotic we talk about the presence of a membrane bound nucleus now indeed both cells have a plasma membrane that separates the constituent of the cell from the environment and we have also described the plasma membrane as a phospholipid bilayer with embedded proteins now all these are things that we have mentioned before and so is a recap of what has come earlier as a prelude to what we are about to discuss today so let's look at the structure of the plasma membrane now i remember telling you that the term phospholipid comes from phosphate group and then a lipid attachment now we have two of that and hence we're calling it a bilayer and there are protein molecules that are embedded within this bilayer now a close look at the image on the screen shows one section up here and then another section down there this is one layer and this is another layer and so when we talk of a bilayer, we're talking about two, one up and then one down. Now embedded in there are proteins that we shall term as integral. So you can identify this as an example of an integral protein because it is found within the two layers, showing up as well as down. This is another example of an integral protein and then we can also look at what we term as peripheral proteins coming from the word itself the peripheries so we have one here we can refer to as a peripheral protein that is to say that the bilayer has proteins mixed within so at certain portions you'd see a protein molecule outside and that also moves into the interior 